Bad storm or a wrong turn from a survival scenario. My name's Craig Stewart, and I teach people how to survive as if my life depends on it. I, I was definitely a Boy Scout, longtime Boy Scout, Eagle Scout. I attribute much of what I know about the woods and how I love the woods to my experience in Boy Scouts. At its core, scouting uses the outdoors to teach character, to teach values, and I love the idea of using the outdoors to bring about positive personal change. And that's the same thing we do in my new show, SOS, How to Survive. The Weather Channel is all about giving people good information on how to make it through weather events. And that is at the core of what survival is. SOS, How to Survive is taking real life stories that happen to real people. And there are real teaching moments in these stories. We find those and we deliver that. go there we go everybody give a round of applause to Connor for taking care of my trusty steed Roxy thank you Connor scouters how are we doing tonight guys my name is Creek Stewart I am a Boy Scout and Eagle Scout and a wilderness survival instructor I teach tens of thousands of people how to survive in the outdoors. Through hands-on courses, through books that I write, and through TV shows like you just saw. But at the end of the day, the best way for me to, to, to describe to you what I do for a living is I am a wilderness survival merit badge counselor on steroids. As I tried to think about what could I possibly say tonight to add value into your lives, I kept coming back to the most popular question that's asked of me. It seems no matter where I go, no matter what I'm doing, someone always asks, Creek, how is it are you able to do what you love for a living? And I got to admit, I have a pretty cool job, and I am blessed far beyond what I deserve. So I thought tonight I would answer that question for you by telling you my scouting story, but I will also give you my best six tips for doing what you love for a living, because each of you are about to embark on your next great adventure to decide on how you will spend the bulk of the days over the course of the bulk of your life in the career path that you choose. Scouters, my story all starts with the Wilderness Survival Merit Badge. How many Indiana boys do we have in the crowd tonight? My brothers, my brothers. I earned my Wilderness Survival Merit Badge at Camp Maumee in Indiana, and it would plant a seed in me that would ultimately bloom and blossom into an incredible career in the Wilderness Survival Training Business. I went on to earn many more merit badges. My eagle, I graduated from high school. I went to college at Butler University to study pharmacy. Wow, that's, that's a big leap between pharmacy and wilderness survival. Some of you are wondering what the connection is. My parents suggested it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. No offense to my pharmacist brothers and sisters, but that was not my passion in life. I just went with it until I figured out what it was I wanted to do. And that was one morning when I had a very unlikely visit 
from the most annoying crow in the world. Guys, I need your help. Give me your most annoying crow noises. Wow. You guys are super annoying. You guys are so annoying, but not as annoying as my crow. This crow came and landed in a pine tree outside of my college dorm room at 5.30 in the morning, and it started to make the most god-awful noises that you can imagine in the world. It came back the next day, the next day, the next day. On the fourth morning, I woke up, I went over to the window, I threw open my window, I looked that crow in his little beady black crow eye, and I said, crow, I am going to catch you, and I am going to kill you. And I meant it. At this point, it was man versus beast. Or I guess the best way to say it to you guys is eagle versus crow. So I did exactly what you guys would have done in that moment. I reached into my desk drawer and I pulled out my college, I pulled out my Boy Scout pocket knife. I carved a trigger system from a branch in that pine tree. I tied a noose with dental floss and I baited that trap with bread from the cafeteria and set it in that pine tree before I went to bed and had big dreams of catching the most annoying crow on planet Earth. The next morning, I was not awoken by the sound of that crow, but rather the sound of my landline phone being yanked off of my desk and skipping across the floor because that's where I tied the other end of the noose. I jumped out of bed, I dove onto my phone, I grabbed the hole of the dental floss, and there it went. And I was looked at the other end, I caught the crow. The crow was on the other end of my dental floss noose. I started reeling it in, hand over fist, like my heart was about to pound out of my chest. I felt more alive than I'd felt in the previous 10 years combined. I got the crow up until about 20 feet of my college dorm room. I was on the third story. When I did, the crow fell down up against the building, okay? Now, if you think a crow makes annoying sounds when it's just sitting in peace on a branch, you can only imagine how annoying it was being drug up the side of a building. Can you help me out? Give me your absolutely most annoying crow noises. Oh, man. You guys are the most annoying scouts in the world. How can you be so annoying? But you are not as annoying as that crow. Just as I got that crow up to the edge of my window, I looked up for a second. And when I did, my eyes shot across the courtyard into another room. And this is what I saw. <laughs> I saw a girl looking back at me watching all of this unfold, okay? I couldn't tell by the look in her eyes whether she was absolutely horrified or whether she too was chanting, kill the stinking crow. I didn't have time to think about it. I didn't have time to think about it. I got the crow to the edge of my window. I wrangled its crow's wings down. I grabbed a hold of its beak so that it wouldn't peck out my jugular. I looked into its little crow eye, and I was just about ready to snap his little crow neck. When the words of my scoutmaster rang in my ear, for some reason they said this to me a lot when I was a young scout, Creek, if you kill it, what? If you kill it, you've got to eat it. Well, I didn't feel like eating crow that morning, nor did I feel like field dressing that crow in my college dorm room, so I cut the noose loose from his little black crow foot. I looked him into his eye one last time, and I said, Crow, if you come back, I will catch you again. I will kill you this time, and I will thoroughly enjoy you for dinner. <laughs> and I meant it. Guys, that crow story awoke something in me that was dead asleep since I had earned my Wilderness Survival Merit Badge. 
fellas. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to do what I wanted to do in life, but I called my parents. I said, Mom, Dad, I don't want to be a pharmacist anymore. Instead, I kind of want to be like Rambo and teach wilderness survival skills in the woods and stuff. Boy, that was an awkward conversation. <laughs> guys, my parents are here somewhere. Can you guys give them a round of applause for actually encouraging a crazy dream in a young eagle? <laughs> guys, if you wait for the money, if you wait for more gifts or more talent or more time or more connections, you will never start doing what you love in life. So I started writing my first wilderness survival book right then and there. It took me two months to write. It was 90 pages long. I self-published it at Kinko's. And when I was done, I was so proud. I drove home. I said, Mom, I changed into my Boy Scout uniform. I said, Mom, take a picture of me. Here's my book. I'm a wilderness survival instructor and author, and I'm about to be rich. I did exactly what you guys would have done in that moment. I took out an ad in the back of Boys Life magazine. <laughs> there is my ad in, in 1998, in between Bike Monkey and Sea Cars wanna, and Sea Monkeys. Want to see it? Uh, Want to see it a little bit bigger? Save yourself free survival booklet. Guys, if anybody in this audience bought that book for $15, I will pay you five times your purchase price so that I could get it back and burn it because I have learned so much since then. <laughs> Guys, no one bought my book. I'm sorry, no one bought my book, but I wasn't discouraged. I said, if they're not going to buy it from an ad, then I will teach a wilderness survival course, and I will try to sell them my book face-to-face. -face. And so that's what I did. Here's a picture of me pre-ponytail teaching my first wilderness survival course. And I want you to look right up in front there. There's a little scouter, fellas. The Boy Scouts have been with me and my story since the absolute very beginning. Through that story and over the course of the next 15 years, I would learn so many life lessons about doing what I love for a living. And I would like to share my top six with you right now. They go fast, so pay attention. You guys must be breathing heavy because I think it's your hot breath that is making me so hot and warm. I have got to, I'm sorry, this is a little weird, but I've got to shed a layer. I've got to take this off. I gotta take this side, take off my. All right. There we go. That's a little bit better. I feel a little bit more comfortable. Guys, my first life tip for doing what you love for a living is some people will think you are crazy, but you have to push forward anyway. Trust me, when I told my friends and family I wanted to be a wilderness survival instructor, some of them actually laughed at me. But I pushed forward. Anyway, guys, my second life tip for doing what you love is what makes you feel most alive in life probably has something to do with your passion and what you should be doing for a living. Guys, my next life tip is one of the most important. Do not miss this one. Bring your Boy Scout pocket knife with you to college. It was instrumental in all of my dreams coming true, and it may be for you too. Guys, your body heat is emanating up on this stage like crazy. This is weird. I gotta take another layer off. I gotta take another layer. Man, one more layer. I promise this is gonna be the last layer. There we go. There we go. Now I'm starting to feel more like myself. Let's get this. Layer off, there we go, there we go. Fellas, my next life tip for doing what you love for a living, you've got to be willing to do the things that other people are not willing to do. And a lot of times, that comes down to good old fashioned hard work. One thing I've discovered is that sometimes the difference between just living and doing what you love for a living is just a little bit of extra hard work. Guys, my second to last tip. Well, I've got two more after this. <laughs> A scout leaves no trace in the woods 
but he or she lives as, li leaves as big of a trace as possible in the world. Guys, I got into this business because it was fun and I wanted to feel like Rambo. I'm still in it 20 years later because I found a way to add value into the lives of other people. You will get into doing what you love for a living because you love it and it's fun, but if you do not find a way to add value into the lives of other people, it will not give you long-lasting, sustaining fulfillment. You leave a tr no trace in the woods, but leave as big a trace as possible in the people that you interact with and in the world. Guys, this lesson right here I could have heard so many times in my life. A scout is not perfect, but should strive for perfection every single morning. Scouters, you are a human scout. You should wake up every morning and strive to achieve and be the 12 points of the scout law. But you are going to make mistakes both personally and professionally. Those mistakes and shortcomings and when you fall short do not define you. The moments when you get back up and push forward toward your dreams anyway and try to make a difference in the lives of other people is what really matters. Despite your mistakes, you are not perfect, but you should wake up every morning and strive to be. Guys, I must be heating you up. I must be heating you up. This is my last life tip. But I'm about to pass out of a heat stroke. This is so awkward. This is, I'm sorry. This is so awkward. I have got to take these pants off. Oh. Fellas, now I feel like myself for the first time since I've been on stage. Guys, my last and most important tip for doing what you love is never forget your roots in scouting. At the beginning of this speech, I told you I was going to answer my most popular question. Creek, how is it that you're able to do what you love for a living, and I've spent the past 15 minutes giving you the really long answer. The fact of the matter is, is each and every one of you know the answer to this question. Everything I know about doing what I love for a living, I learned in the Boy Scouts. God bless you, and God bless the Boy Scouts. Thank you. Thank you.